Hey everyone, uh, Professor Reed here. Another update. Uh, here I am, February of 2024. A little bit, a little bit older, a little bit wiser, I guess you could say. It's sort of a cliche, but wanted to do my <clears throat> my like sort of semester uh, in review for the fall 2023 semester. Now I have to also uh, add in a little caveat here. I am also trying to promote or advocate, I guess you should say for myself, with um, the concept of being an adjunct professor. Now, if you look statistically, and don't quote me on this, but I, I would want to say that adjuncts over the last 20 years are going to be on a rise. Um, it is uh, something that in the academic world, you're seeing more and more adjuncts come into the system. And I would say that there's a, there's a fair amount of burnout in the adjunct world, and there's other you know psychological things going on. Not to get too um, you know political at all. I try to stay politically neutral, but there is there's been you know different types of organization and unionization of adjuncts, uh, of adjuncts across the board. Now, me personally, I'm an adjunct in the Philadelphia area. I've been doing this for about 12 years now, and I've, I've you know, basically stayed in the English writing world and uh, really enjoyed uh, that experience. Um, I'm an active writer trying to work on my book, um, which is called Secret Combinations, trying to really, really strive for the book to be done uh, this semester, February 2024. And, uh, you know, it, adjunct as an adjunct professor, it gives me a chance to really focus in on you know, making this experiences really proactively good for uh, uh, writers across the board. Now, one of the challenges amongst many challenges is trying to have the assignments align with the different universities, uh, you know, core goals and initiatives. So uh, as an adjunct, that is going to be one of the bigger challenges, because if you are familiar with the, some of the discussions about, you know, adjuncting across the board, it's very hard to make a make a actual livable wage. Okay, so I approach it. I had a, a, a tenure in my life where I was a, a salesperson, and I and I actually sold copiers uh, amongst other things. Uh, and I really was a terrible salesperson. I think I did an all right job. Now I was selling copiers for a for a big company at sort of the peak of that industry. Well, actually a little post peak, but it was. It was definitely not where it's at now. Uh, post COVID, the copier world has become less and less of a, of a thing. And we've gone to more of an online model, as you can see here with Canvas in the, um, ad, you know, in the professor academic world. So long story short is I, I approach life as a form of a, of a failed salesperson, if that makes sense. And I also uh, grew up in Virginia was heavily involved with uh, sports. I played uh, primarily baseball, but I also played football. And by the time I got to high school, my grades were so bad, I couldn't actually like continue to play. And uh, I also, as a, as a kid, was raised Methodist. So I was United Methodist. Now, to this day, I sort of consider myself like a uh, very respectful religion, but I don't, I don't practice a religion per se. Um, and I would also say that, it, but it impacted my life. Some of the John Wesley uh, types of teaching were a big factor in my life. In addition, I was what they called a Boy Scout. Now, once I started to have to wear the uniform of a Boy Scout, it ended up that I decided to quit and I was pretty actively involved. I was the patrol leader, uh, those sort of things in the Boy Scouts up until the age of 14. And at that time period in my life, the sports, the Boy Scouts, and the Methodism, which my mom was an amazing, amazing mom. My mom and dad were great uh, people. My mom was a United Methodist uh, uh, women's president, so very uh, important thing in my life. And also, um, at that point, I discovered something called punk rock, which was like a you know a movement that was sort of big in uh, that time period. And the ethos of punk, particularly like a straight edge type of punk, uh, really resonated with me. Throughout my life, and I had band, I had been, my own band. I had a couple, I had a, a couple bands as well, and you know, I'm still like into the sort of mindset of like not selling out, not becoming part of like an overall structure. So I think as I got older, uh, I kept that ethos of punk, but I also went to the sales world as, as sort of the interesting sort of like 
influences in my life that occur, I think it made me into who I am. So I approach being an adjunct professor in sort of that realm. So as I go through this, I just wanted to make a video that A, introduce myself, and then B, just gives a little bit of a, the story or the background of being an adjunct professor. I think it's an amazing lifestyle. It keeps me in line with sort of my ethics, I guess you could say. And uh, I get to see a fair amount of students that have really amazing experiences. Now the YouTube page that I have, you know, this is sort of an introduction to it. If you take a class with me, um, you can check out you can check out my rate my professor uh, reviews. They're pretty good. Although sometimes students can, you know, you got to always keep in mind that students that either really really like you or really really dislike you go on to rate my professor. So there's not like that sort of aggregate in the middle. But I would say um, some of the online classes can be some of the more difficult ones. Now, what I do also is I use um, a lot of the lectures from YouTube uh, on my in my classes. So you may take a class with me on the YouTube page. Or we may take a class with me and then I use a lecture on the YouTube page that is uh, maybe it was used for another class. So I try to combine essays. I'm constantly trying to tweak essays. I'm constantly trying to update my YouTube page. Uh, in addition to being the best writer, I want to also be the best writing professor. I've never taken an education course. Like I've never studied um, how exactly to teach a course, uh, nor did I, you know, unfortunately pay much attention like in high school. But I've had really amazing professors that have resonated with me, and I want to try to achieve that as well. So if you ever got, you know, if you ever have a question about anything. Let me know um, via email or we can set up a Zoom meeting, what have you. But I just want to take a second to just sort of like explain myself a little bit uh, because, you know, there's 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 pressures you guys have as students. There's pressures you have as, an, as a professor. But really, I think they, they've done some polling and a lot of times students sort of assume that uh, a professor position is more like the full time position, which is great. You know, they have office hours, which I do as well. But they they also have to do you know meetings with departments and there's a lot of like logistical things they have to take care of whereas as an adjunct you're you're relatively free but i personally try to stack up my classes i try to manage my time management system and i try to have the youtube page as ways of if you miss a class or if you just need information uh it'll sort of help you out with that so i hope i hope that you know that's a that's a good introduction for me uh, as a, you know, who I am as a professor, and I try to be very uh, open to conversation. I try to improve the lectures, and I also try to get back to you via email, what have you. So let me just go through this. Enough about me. Uh, but here's my classes for fall 2023, which I would argue were some of the best classes I've ever had across the board. So my first class here is going to be, you know, pictured. It was my my uh, fall uh, Penn State class over at Abington. I'm an adjunct at Abington. 8 a.m. It was an 015 class, which was basically the 101 class. Amazing students here as pictured. And I had a very specific student who wasn't there the day of the photograph. His name was Dave. And um, really impressive student across the board. Now, uh, you know, there was multiple students there. And, you know, in a, in a 101 type of class, it's, it's a journey where you're starting out as a professor. I really enjoy the fall 101 style writing classes. I end up really having um, you know, like like amazing experiences, and thematically, I keep those classes sort of centered around like this idea of conspiracy theory. Now, I also teach 202 level classes over at Penn State Abington. Uh, this is one of my favorite classes across the board. Uh, we, you know, I added some new lectures in. We focus a lot on APA, uh, but just, you know, every class, the Buddhists have an idea of like, you never step in the same stream twice. Uh, it's something I say to myself sort of every day, but I don't know that we're ever gonna have a certain combination of, of, um, majors and personalities I had in my 202 class as well. So, uh, there they are. And then I also teach over at Holy Family University, which is a great school, currently a Catholic school. Uh, in Northeast Philadelphia. I'm centered around the Philadelphia area, as, as you can see, and uh, taught a public speaking course, which was uh, great throughout the semester. Uh, another public speaking course as well. Um, and, you know, this, this semester we had uh, really outstanding 
uh, speeches that were done across the board. Um, I don't want to mention anybody specifically because I feel like that would be, you know, like I want to keep this sort of general, but that class was pretty amazing and a lot of growth in these public speaking classes. I really enjoy them. And I had a class that was my 101 class over there at Holy Family as well. Um, and just an uh, amazing group of students, you know, for 1130, and especially you have to take the gen ed courses and they can be a little, a little bit difficult in terms of like, you know, where you're at trying to manage things. They do say that a lot of times students will see the gen ed classes as sort of like, I don't want to say a waste, but they, they almost say, you know, I wish we could not take them. But I feel like, you know, learning APA, learning all these sort of stylistic things about the writing process or MLA in a 101 class is going to be super helpful. Then, oh yeah, there's an additional photo there. Okay, you can see John pointing. Okay. All right, now, uh, over at Jefferson, I got to say I have a special place for Jefferson University. That's the school event the longest. And uh, this is a, they have the traditional 101 class. We look at this idea of discourse community. We talk about other essays. And uh, my son actually goes there. So I have a real specific connection to that. So that's my uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday class, 101. And then there's another class picture here of my students for uh, my 101 section. Okay. And then next of all, there's an initial 101. So once again, you know, just to give you a little scope of what I do, um, I teach in multiple schools. It's a lot to balance. You know, it's a lot of time management. It's going back and forth. We have to conference for class. I try to give full in-depth information. And that sales background, although I was terrible at sales, uh, I feel like I was really good at like time management and sort of reinforced some skills. I think I sort of had a natural inclination to, okay. And then I'm over at LaSalle University as well. So LaSalle uh, University is in, you know, Philadelphia. It's, it's, um, it's you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a Catholic school. You know, there's like uh, crosses in a room. And it's, you know, it's, it's very, uh, it's very like steeped in tradition. So LaSalle is a school I absolutely love. I did the ADP program there over the summer to have amazing, amazing experiences. And that's my 202 class there that I had a lot of students who took me for 110 take, sort of take the journey on and uh, a lot of memories of that class. Um, and then there's my other LaSalle class with my water polo students in it. And I got to say, I got to I gotta give a, a moment of thanks to my water polo students. I've had three, uh, no, four water polo students and they, it, LaSalle has a water polo team, a women's water polo team. I want to say at one point they did have a men's team. And I'm like the biggest fan of water polo at LaSalle because my students were just impressive, amazing group of students. I want to say like every year their GPA is like off the charts for them. And then there's a photo of me also kneeling with them at the end of the semester. Okay, so that's me. You can see my beard got a little bit bigger. I trimmed it down, um, but you know, it is what it is. Some people think I'm one of the brothers because my beard is so long. If you know about LaSalle, that'd be sort of a joke about that. And uh, yeah, really great group of students there. And then finally, I got a photo of my son, uh, Andrew Gonzalez and AJ Lefton. Uh, my son is currently playing baseball over there at Jefferson University. Uh, his two friends are also former students of mine and uh, really great relationship, uh, support that student athlete combination there as well. So I wanna keep this under 15 minutes. So that's me, that's a little bit of review. So an introduction and also a review of fall 2023. Currently in the middle of fall of spring 2024. And uh, I don't know, I feel like I had some really amazing experiences in um, fall, but you know, every semester, like I said, it's never the same string twice. Pretty amazing experience across the board. So that's it for me.